Um, hello, and thank you for attending. Welcome to the kickoff event for Terrapin Love Week, Loving the Skin I'm In. My name is Lena Donaldson. I'm an event coordinator with the University of Maryland Alumni Association. The goal of this week's programming is to highlight various types of love that exist among our alumni, including love of career, love of friends, love after heartbreak, et cetera. We will also have some fun virtual activities such as dance instruction and a not so newlywed game. Today's session addresses love of self. Your outer shell is what people see first. As a student and member of the alumni pop population, have you felt comfortable in your own skin? How has that transformed into your work life? Our panelists will reflect on their personal journeys and provide some suggestions on how to navigate the world of loving the skin you're in. Before we get started, I wanted to address a few house housekeeping items. First, please remain on mute so that we all can enjoy the panel. Secondly, if you have questions, please type them in the chat feature and we will address them during our Q&A period. Also, this event is being recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel. Now I would like to introduce you to our moderator, Nicole Mehta, class of 2010. Nicole is the Program Director for Diversity and Inclusion at the University of Maryland. She obtained her master's degree in 2010 in counseling and higher education and is currently a doctorate student in public affairs. Nicole, I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Lena. Um, thank you everyone for joining us today to kick off Terrapin Love Week. Um, so our focus today is on self-love, right? And we have a lot of great um, alumni here to talk, talk with us about their journeys. So to ground us a little bit, many, if not all of us have grown up with and are still surrounded by beauty standards that are grounded in dominant ideals of beauty. Right? And they relate to a lot of privileged identities. So like being white or lighter skinned, cisgendered, thin, able-bodied, et cetera. Right? And these ideals are unrealistic, unrealistic for many of us. And this panel is about how we expand definitions of beauty and also value and love ourselves. So we have some phenomenal Maryland alumni, alumni with us today to talk about their journeys. Um, Joy Fennell, class of 2004 is a top fashion and celebrity makeup artist and founder of the Joy and Beauty and the All Black Everything Summit. We have Trisha Downing, class of 91. It's a lifelong athlete and founder of The Cycle of Hope, mentoring women wheelchair users to redefine their lives. And then we have Rock Evans, AKA Miss Toto, class of 2014, who has been named Miami's best drag queen in 2018 and is continuing to make a name for herself on the national stage with events and her activism for the Black and LGBT communities. So to start out, I want to ask our panelists to introduce yourselves a little more and ground us in our topic for today. Um, so could you tell us a little about yourself and what the term self-love means to you? Um, so I'll go first. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, so my name is Joy Fennell. Um, so I am a grad, of course, graduate of uh, Maryland, which I'm extremely proud about. Go Terrapins. Um, I am, <laughs> I actually uh, am from, originally from Maryland, but I also lived in New York for like 16, 17 years in Harlem, um, pursuing a career in fashion, uh, doing makeup in fashion. So for me, um, let's see, self-love is, in my opinion, all about freedom. It's all about just, just loving yourself no matter what and feeling like you deserve to be loved as well. So that is one of the things that I totally uh, want to strive towards teaching everyone, including, you know, and especially the younger people coming up that you don't, you don't have to feel like you have to be perfect in order to be loved. You are loved because you exist. So, so why not go after that and just have a life full of freedom and enjoyment and love? So, yeah. Uh, 
I'll go next. Um, so I'm Trisha Downing, graduated from the journalism school in 91, which is quite a long time ago. Um, but I have very fond memories of being at the University of Maryland and I'm super proud to be a Terp also. I have had um, a really varied career. I started out in television after graduating um, because my major was in broadcast journalism. So I worked in television for a few years and then um, I started working in sports and then I eventually became an athlete because I decided I didn't want to just work with the athletes. I wanted to be one myself. So um, I've had quite a journey and um, have over the years really um, been able to, I guess, look at all of the different identities of myself. Um, in the year 2000, I was hit by a car while I was training on my bike as um, a competitive cyclist and I was paralyzed from the chest down. Oh, so nice. um, I was, you know, immediately, um, you know, needing to use a wheelchair for my mobility. And so um, that was, you know, one part of my identity that I had to come to terms with, you know, that definitely didn't meet the, the normal beauty standard that we see. Um, but even more than that, before when I was at Maryland, um, something that I really fought against was the fact that I'm biracial. And um, I was adopted by an all white family, even though my biological mother is white and my biological father is black. And so for me, it was a really difficult kind of tug of war because um, growing up in a white family, most of my friends were white and my, my life was basically you know, what we would consider white, but I didn't fit into that picture. And so that was something that I really struggled with. And I, you know, just now I think in the past, you know, handful of years, I've really started to look at all of my identities and say, you know, I'm, I'm finally okay with all of these because these are who I am. And being beautiful isn't just about the package that you're wrapped in. It's about, you know, the person that you become and the person that you are. And so, you know, I wish somebody would have told me that back when I was at the University of Maryland and I was worried about my kinky curly hair and hanging out with girls with like long blonde straight hair and thinking that I just didn't belong. I was muted, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all of that. Um, hello everyone, my name is Rock. I graduated from University of Maryland in 2014. I studied biology and Spanish, um, but I also was a cheerleader. So I was like always on the field and like involved in way too much. Uh, but as far as like my own journey to discuss like self-love, I would say I'm still going through that. Um, I grew up in a very, very small town in Western Maryland, which is like very, very white. Uh, the only like black people are either all my family members, um, <laughs> which is like kind of ironic or um, the, the other just like people on the South side of Cumberland where I'm from. And like growing up, I was always like, why is there not a lot of black culture outside of my family? Or like, why is my family the only like accepted family um, into these like white spaces and I never really understood that and it made me like reflect and think like why am I not proud of who I am or proud of like my my culture my skin color anything like that and then as I got older especially like, going to Maryland I got to see a lot more diversity outside of just black and white because there's not much culture in Cumberland there's not an Indian community an Asian community like really anything aside from black and white so going to Maryland, I really had a huge journey of self-discovery of just being like, oh, I'm not just the only Black person that I can see or touch or reach out to and talk about my experiences. Um, and then building on top of that, I also am queer, I'm non-binary, and then also do drag. Um, so that's another thing that I had to like understand and deal with. And as far as self-love goes, like now I'm really ingrained and pushing for the mission that like whatever you you are born with, whatever happens to you, whatever comes to you, uh, you have to just kind of roll with the punches and find the love within that. So like I wasn't sitting at home and being like, I'm gonna choose to be non-binary today. <laughs> like that's not how that happened. Um, but in that I'm like, okay, this is how I identify, this is how I feel. And now I need to find the love in that. Like there's nothing wrong with that. And I wish I could 
like have known that a lot sooner. So then I could just try to spread that message to a lot more people. Like what you have, what you're dealt with, that's where you need to find that love within yourself because we're the whole idea behind people and uniqueness is that we're all different and finding that love within yourself and your uniqueness and what makes you different should just really empower you to like put that in the forefront of who you are. Thank you all so much. Uh, so you've touched on representation a little bit um, and the significance of seeing other people that look like you growing up, right? Um, so could you talk a little bit more about what messages did you get around beauty and self-love when you were growing up and how did that influence your own self-image? And we can go in the same order or if someone else wants to pop in first, that's fine. I think for me, you know, I grew up around, um, you know, seeing people in, you know, advertisements or on TV or whatever, where I didn't, you know, I didn't see people who looked like me. I didn't see, you know, somebody who I thought was, um, you know, mixed race. And um, in that, I think, unfortunately, like overshadowed what I felt in my family, because in my family, my mom was so accepting of everyone. Like she would go up and talk to anybody at any time about anything. And, um, you know, so she always, you know, told me that I was beautiful and told me that I was special and wonderful. Um, but, you know, I let what was outside of me uh, really dictate what I thought beauty was. Um, and so I had a hard time seeing myself as beautiful and um you know so i there are so many different places that we get messages from i guess and you know it's it's like where you know where do you get those those biggest messages are they you know from from your family or are they from kind of that peer pressure or you know your friends at school and what they're doing and what they look like and um you know we try so hard to fit in but also be unique at the same time and it's just this really you know, massive tug of war, I think. So um, I don't know if that really answered the question, but, I, you know, there were a lot of places that I felt those messages of beauty came from when I was growing up. Um, for me, I felt like it, it, it had a lot to do with my family. Um, I, I was uh, partially raised in the South when I was younger, and I was raised by my grandparents. And Southern grandparents have a way of being that I don't know if anyone knows, but they have a way of talking where you're like, oh, okay, thanks for saying that to me. I appreciate that. <laughs> so now let me go and cry in the corner somewhere, you know? <laughs> So, so it's just like, so, um, you know, like learning from them, you know, like I'm surprised that I'm even like sitting here right now. So it was really, it, it, it was a challenging time um, growing up, but also I think for me, um, just going into the industry that I went into, which was the fashion industry, that added on a whole nother layer because of course, you know, I definitely didn't see people that looked like me in that industry. I was was, um, I was a lot of times on set, I was the only black girl. I was also the only big girl on set. Like I was, it was, I was, a, oh, I hit on so many different onlys on set. And it was just really like, um, it was interesting kind of mixing like, or, or to um, kind of be prepared for those things. But honestly, like I really felt like being at, for me, being at Maryland really opened up a lot of understanding in myself because I also grew up in predominantly black neighborhoods. So when I went to Maryland, I was able to expand who I knew and expand uh, being able to be comfortable in other situations. One of the things though, when I have to say that when, you know, being a makeup artist, I was really big on not really contouring noses, um, especially black women's noses, because I felt for myself that, you know, a lot of times, of course, in certain situations, you need to contour nose just to add dimension, depth, you know, like, yes, definitely. You definitely have to, but it's like, but at some, sometimes, you know, I feel like uh, the default for everyone is make my nose look smaller. And I was like, but your nose is your nose. And I was, and I personally was like, I don't want, you know, like I felt like for me that that was, uh, 
a thing against my own principles where I was like, ah, no, you know, just depending on, of course, you know, the situation. I was like, you don't really need that, you know? So I, so I, I took it as a personal thing to, to definitely challenge that, uh, that notion to make everyone's noses smaller because I'm like, look, like my little nose, like it is what it is. I am who I am. It is, you know, love me or leave me alone. <laughs> so yes. I always talk about the anglification within makeup because there's like a, there's always like make my nose skinnier or like the colored contacts, like don't be doing all that. Like, especially within drag, I try to keep my, keep my culture in my drag. Like, yes, I have things about myself that I like really just am a unit. Like there are many black yeehaw <laughs> drag queens but in that I am going to be wearing my do rags I am going to make everything I do black like wearing braids wearing dreads like whatever I still want like that my black culture to be very apparently like, I don't want to be hiding behind um what everyone else ex is expecting because just I don't know if y'all are familiar with drag culture but it's super easy at, to to become a very famous drag queen if you're white and skinny. And I am neither of those things. So like I've, I've learned that if I'm really leaning into who I am and what I'm putting forth, it just has kind of set me apart in my own drag and my own uniqueness, but also just like it makes it more authentic. Like this is who I am. This is the culture that I've been raised in. This is, this is what I'm trying to put forth because with drag, I've realized that it is, a creation of, and for me, it's an extension of who I am, but it's also this character that I get to create. Like I can make myself anything I want. I can change my eye shape and change my nose shape and do whatever, but it's up to me to make it authentic to who I am. And I realized that just like watching, just even drag culture change back and forth. It's like, all these girls look the same. They're all wearing the same hair and the same makeup. And it, like every everyone's looking at the skinny white girls. And for me, I'm kind of just trying to be the antithesis of that. Like, okay, love what they're doing over there, but here's what I'm doing over here. And trying to not just inspire like other black drag performers, but just like in general, like put your culture into your into your art because that's I think what's important and that's what's going to then expand on the idea and give your culture and give your messaging to more people. Uh, like there's there's a way to still be fun and artistic and still educate people without just doing the same exact thing that like we've been told is the way to do it. And I think that's like very important just as how we how we live in general and how we express ourselves. Like you know, I'm not saying you have to put your culture in everything you do, but I'm saying that it is important to think about, especially when you're like, this is what makes me different. This is what makes me unique. And these are the things that I love about myself that I also want everyone else to understand and see that I'm presenting this and putting this forth so you can then understand me even better without actually knowing me. Thank you all for sharing, for sharing that and how you've resisted these dominant standards of beauty in your fields um, and how to infuse being authentic and what that means to you, right? So one of the things that struck me about this panel when Lena shared your bios with me initially um, was that all of your professions, the body is central to your work, right? Whether it's by appearance or athleticism, et cetera. Um, so confidence in your body is essential, right? So could you talk to us a little bit about uh, your journey and getting to where you are today? I think for me, where my journey started out, of course, you know, I think I, I think it started out like how everyone starts out. When we're younger, we're more self-conscious. When we get older, we just stop giving a, eh, you know, it is what it is. You know, like after a while, you just, you get over it. You're done. You're like, I, I, I'm tired of trying to find a way for someone to accept me. I don't care anymore. Like if you, if you like, why do I need to spend any more time trying to get someone who, actually probably honestly 
also deals with their own issues to like me. Like I'm done, you know? So I think that that is where I am right now in my 45 year old self. I am like on this journey where I'm just like, all right, y'all, enough is enough. You either love me or you don't. Let's keep it moving. So, so yeah, so that's me. <laughs> I love that, Joy. I am uh, in my early 50s, and I've sort of come to that same place, too. And what's unfortunate is I think that, especially as women, I think we come to this place at a really late time in our lives. And I wish that, you know, we could come to this conclusion earlier that beauty is so many different things. And, you know, really, it is what makes you stand out, That which, it, that is what makes you beautiful. And so, you know, after I had my accident in 2000, you know, I went through a complete identity crisis because I was, you know, used to being, you know, almost 5'11 and tall and thin and muscular and strong and doing, you know, competing in cycling. And I looked very athletic. And then suddenly, you know, the next day I'm in a wheelchair and, you know, my body is completely different. And I'm, you know, I have a disability, which is, you know, not something that people strive for or want or think is beautiful. And, um, but as I grew in um, disabled sports and started working to become a Paralympic athlete, um, I realized that my body is really my strength. And I, you know, it was like for the first time, like I felt empowered because I was able to do these things that like, you know, able-bodied people are athletes too, but I'm like, yeah, well, I, I'm going to take that up a notch and I'm going to be disabled and I'm going to be an awesome athlete. And, you know, so I think that it's just like, it, it gave me this new look at who I am and what's important. And to me, what's important is being able to achieve my goals that I set for myself and that will make me happy. And, you know, like Joy said, you know, you can take it or leave it, but this is, you know, who I am and this, this is what I'm going for. And, you know, you really have to get into this place where um, I, ta I tell a story in my motivational speaking programs about how um, I was in a race one time and I was, I was falling behind and, and I didn't do well that day. And there was a woman who was riding next to me in this bike race and she told me what I really needed to do was just ride my own race which means you need to do what you need to do um, in the way that you need to do it and in the way your body can do it. And don't worry about what's happening around you um, because ultimately you're trying to get you to the finish line. You're not trying to, you know, get everybody else to the finish line. And so, um, you know, that's the thing that I tell myself all the time, ride your own race. You know, this is, this is your, your body, your life, do it your way. I love that. <laughs> um, so I don't know if y'all know about non-binary, but it's, I don't identify as male nor female. Like the, the gender binary does not matter to me. Like I'm not, like do not perceive me, like whatever. So it's hard also because I'm a bodybuilder. So I compete in the male category. That's cool. But then as far as the drag that I do is more of the like feminine female drag but what is a woman who's to say what a woman is because there's a large definition spectrum of womanhood so I am still like always kind of battling what I look like versus what I feel so like but then it's a headspace so like when I go into these bodybuilding shows I'm like this is my drag I'm putting on this masculine male costume going to do these things and that's where I fit in in this world but then as far as drag if I'm not completely bodied or if I don't have my hair on or if I like don't have my makeup exactly the way I like, I'm not feeling like I'm the woman that I'm trying to be. So for me, it's always like what, there's a certain point in like the transformation that I'm like, oh, I finally feel comfortable in, in what I look like. Uh, but that's not saying I'm uncomfortable all the time. It just is like depending on the situation of how I'm feeling. And I've learned like, in, in my day-to-day, -day, how I can present to make myself feel comfortable and exist and and just be happy with who I am. But then same thing with, with drag. I'm trying to really expand upon just within my own life, like what my idea and what my vision of a woman is or what drag is. Because like I said, there are shapes, sizes, colors, everything of women, like what is a woman? So why am I trying to fit into my narrow identity or my narrow idea of what Miss Toto as a woman is? Because that, 
should not exist to me. <laughs> like, especially someone so like gung ho about gender isn't real. Like, I don't need to keep this idea of what a woman is to, to, to make myself feel comfortable in drag. So that's something I'm still working towards. But as, as I'm like doing drag more and like really just trying to create more looks and like just more content in general, it, it's becoming a lot easier because it's, I, I also like to blur the line within drag, not drag, makeup, not makeup. Cause I tell people all the time, I'm like, your drag is how you present. Whether you're a, a, you call yourself a drag queen or a drag performer, that's your drag. You getting dressed up and going to work is drag. You putting on makeup and deciding what you're wearing today is your drag. So how you're presenting is your drag. And it doesn't need to fit in any type of box because it's up to you how to decide how you're presenting. So that's where I'm at with, with my like presentation and self-discovery. And it, I think there's never really like an end destination. Like I feel like we're always going to be evolving and understanding ourselves more and more. And it's just a matter of taking the time to try to really do that. And I don't think <laughs> I haven't done it in my 28 years of living until recently. Um, and I wish I did it a little sooner or someone told me like, hey, you need to really like learn about yourself more so then you can love yourself more and you can understand because I think a lot of fear and loving yourself comes from not understanding what you're feeling. Thank you. Um, so Rock segued into my next question a little bit. Um, so, so we've talked about how we've grown in, in confidence, right? And loving ourselves. But all of us have those days where we are critical of ourselves, right? Where we wake up and we're just not feeling it, right? Um, so given that your professions are, are, the body is so central, how do you deal with those days? For me, I get in drag. <laughs> That's like, really, I'm like, I, I sometimes like get in these headspace where I'm like, oh my God, I have to record this or I have to do this. I have to do that. But at a certain point, once I'm like doing my makeup, I'm like, oh, I love this. I actually love doing this. I like have gotten to a point where I like enjoy the process of like getting dolled up and getting in makeup and creating that person. So for me, I've realized like if I take the time and instead of thinking of it as a chore, it's like a release. That's what has really helped me just like get out of, or shake myself out of that headspace. Like whether or not it's a creative or new look, it's like just doing the process of like getting dolled up has really, has really helped me. I, I love that, Rock. I, I think that, you know, w when you're not feeling good about yourself, it's really, that's when you dig deep and kind of like just say, you know, who do I want to be today? And, you know, how can I create that for myself? And, you know, whether that's doing your hair or your makeup or putting on a different outfit, um, you know, or just looking at yourself differently and saying, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, my stomach is pudgy. But then I look at my arms and I'm like, whoa, those look really damn good, you know, because I've been riding on my hand cycle and I'm super strong. So, you know, I mean, maybe there's a part of you that you just, you know, look at and you're like, that's a really good trait. And, you know, we all have things that we don't like about ourselves, but you can't, you can't focus on the stuff that you don't like, you know, focus on the stuff that you do like, dress it up and go out and just, you know, be confident in it. I have to agree. Um, I am definitely a rock on that in terms of, uh, for me, especially during the pandemic, when, you know, it was stay at home, I was just like, okay, when I first started, it was sweatpants, barely getting dressed up. And then I was like, you know what? I need to get dressed. I need to do something to shake myself out of whatever I'm feeling that day. And, and actually, even if it's not fully dressed, me just putting on my red lip or something, it really does make a difference to me. I mean, I, I have to say that I'm not, I'm not um, 100% perfect on that just yet. It's days when I just have those, I have those days where it's, I, I think it's just, it's going to be, uh, you know, it's, it's really hard to have 100% perfect days every day when you're just going to come out the house and feel like, oh my gosh, y'all look so amazing every single day. I think we also have to get um, okay with the fact that, you know, every day doesn't have to be 
you, you know, feeling or, or putting on, you know, everything. But for me, it's during the pandemic, it did help me. It helped me, um, deal with it more and, um, actually feel like, okay. But then after what was a day, probably 30, I was like, all right, y'all, I'm done with that. <laughs> where are the sweatpants? <laughs> like, where are the sweatpants? Where are my Cheetos? It is what it is at this point, you know? <laughs> so, so then I had to be okay with that. And know that I, it's just going to be days where I'm just not going to get out of bed. I'm going to watch TV all day. It is what it's going to be. And I'm going to be okay, you know? So, so I think it really does depend. And that's the thing for me is like, I feel like, you know, like we have this constant messaging out here now that, you know, every single hair needs to be in place. Every single eyelash needs to be in place in order to to be loved and or in order to love. And I'm like, you, we don't, we don't have to do that. We are, we exist. So we, we deserve love. I think um, that's a good point, Joy, about the pandemic, because I think the pandemic is kind of like the opposite end of social media, where, you know, we get on social media and everybody posts the picture where they look perfect, where they have just the right angle and where, you know, they're wearing a bikini and they look super thin and whatever. And, you know, I think in the pandemic, a lot of us, I hope everybody has had that opportunity to be like, this, yeah, this is what it is. And, you know, today, like my hair hasn't been cut and three months, my eyebrows are all like bushy and sticking out. And, you know, there's just nothing I can do about it. And, and guess what, we've all gotten through it. And we've all, you know, learned different things about ourselves and about each other. And we've had, you know, we've had some really like special moments, I think, in the pandemic, because it's like, we have to look harder now, we have to look harder for, you know, the really good things in life. life. And I, you know, I, I think it's, you know, in some ways, you just have to let yourself go and just, you know, say, hey, this is what, what it is. And, um, you know, one of those moments for me was last year, well, not last year, pandemic year, but in 2018, um, my husband and I went to Hawaii. And, um, you know, I've always been that, you know, that half black, half white girl and wanting to tame my curly hair. And when we were in Hawaii, it was just he and I, and I know he's seen my hair in every single stage it's ever been in. Um, you know, I was just like, you know what, I'm in and out of the pool. I'm not doing my hair. And if my hair looks crazy, my hair looks crazy. And I, I don't really even care. And that to me was like this awesome turning point where I was just like, this is my hair. If you don't like it, don't, don't look at it, but um, it's just how it is. And so, um, you know, I think that when you can just, just let go and say, this is it, I think that's when you really kind of arrive at being okay with with who you are. Yeah, those are great points about how the pandemic has changed our, our views and perspectives, right, in our context. I think at the beginning of the pandemic, there was a lot of talk about how can we make this a more productive time and work out and do this and do that. And now it's shifted to more self-care and it's okay if you didn't finish the couch to 10K program and you can't run a half marathon and all of that, right? Um, yeah, so thank you for that. Um, so so my next question, thinking back about your, your time at Maryland, right? Um, in terms of loving your outer shell, as Lena put it, um, what do you wish you knew when you were a college student? I wish that I knew how like iconic my friends were <laughs> like I'm literally looking back at this and I'm like we were so ahead of our time like we were wearing like dresses out like long tank tops like no pants like we were just like being very just authentic in who we were and I think if if there was like an older queer person or someone just being like, y'all are doing exactly what you need to be doing. I think I would have felt a little more secure in what we were doing because it was always kind of like, we're doing this, but we're not sure if we're, we're allowed to do this or if this is okay. Or like what we're really trying to express because we were just going through it on our own. But I'm like looking back on these pictures and I'm like, if I knew what I was doing back then and kept doing that, I would probably be a lot further in my like self-discovery journey than I am right now. But also like, I'm very thankful for those moments because we were all 
it, it was a journey of self-discovery for all of us, which is nice to go through. But I think if we had kind of had a little more guidance <laughs> from somebody, um, just being like, y'all are doing exactly what you need to be doing, that would have been nice. But I also liked that we were doing it authentically and on our own. Like I was able to be surrounded by people that we were all doing it. Well, walking in the dark. So like I'm next to my mirror right here too, because I like, they're the reason I started doing drag. We all started like watching Drag Race together, like freshman year sitting on our beds. And I'm not saying that I love Drag Race, but it was a part of like that queer culture that we were like becoming a part of. So like, they're very important to me and who I am and what I do currently. But I wish there was like some upperclassmen or some, but, but there wasn't. Um, just telling us like, you're killing it. You're doing like, be out, be about, be queer, ex try things like clothes don't have a gender, wear a dress if you want. Like, I wish there was that. And now I think in the position, which is good because in the position I am, I know there are a lot of like terps that do follow me. Um, and I get on live and they'll jump in on my lives. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I loved being at Maryland. If you want to wear a dress, wear a dress to class. Like, who cares? You know, like do, <laughs> do what you want to do. Maryland has, was very supportive for me however many years ago I went there. And I'm sure it's even more like going in that direction now. So there are people there to support you. Like, and I survived and I'm doing okay. So <laughs> like keep doing that. And that's why you're at Maryland and doing what you need to be doing. So that, like, I think me being kind of lost has shifted into me trying to like help that generation to give them what I didn't have. Um, I think for me, I, I wish I, I wish I would have had rock spirit when I was in college because I think for me, I was more stuck in, in a box and trying to keep myself there because I, I, I wanted to feel like I fit in and I wanted to feel like I was doing the right things and looking the right way. And, um, you know, again, I think that happens a lot more often with women than it does with men. But I, I wish that Maryland does have such amazing diversity and I wish I would have tapped into that diversity a little more and let myself, you know, experience every one of my ID identities, whether it was, you know, being a female or being biracial or being an athlete, you know, whatever it was, I wish I would have been able to explore that more. And so, you know, I just encourage you all, you know, who are still students to, you know, tap into what Maryland has to offer because there are so many different kinds of people there, so many different walks of, of life. And, you know, one of the ways to accept yourself, I think, is to be accepting of others and to, you know, look at where they're coming from and who they are and letting yourself absorb part of that into your life and, um, you know, just being willing to be open-minded and free and saying, you know, that person is totally different from me. Instead of walking in the other way, walk up to them and get to know them because within knowing them, you might actually get to know part of yourself a little bit better. I love that. I love that. So for me, I felt like Marilyn, I met some of my lifelong friends uh, that have I've been friends with for over 20 years now. And I'm just like, I'm really happy and blessed that I went to Maryland um, because now I have family. Yeah, I mean, like not now I have family, I have family, but, but you know, that extended family, they're also my family. I'm really, um, there were things for me, when I look back, I really wish that I had not been afraid to do certain things that I would have just tackled it, uh, 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 went and, and did it without question. I think that that is definitely um, one of the things when I look back, but that's also something I feel like you really do learn when you're in college. You you really do learn certain things that will you, you will take with you throughout your life that is cultivated in college that you don't realize is cultivated in college. So, so that is what I feel like for myself. I feel like it, you know, looking back, I wish I had enough, you know, like certain things like, oh, I should have spoken up on this or something like that. Um, that is what um, just kind of uh, really uh, honed my voice, my uh, spoken up a little bit more about certain things. So, yes. 
I think just to add one more thing, I think Rock ha had said this too before, is that, you know, we're all always a work in progress and you can't, you know, you can't berate yourself for something that you aren't yet or something that you're trying to become. So, you know, always be kind to yourself and um, I think realize that, you know, like you may want to be you know, whatever kind of person, and it's going to take time to get there. And it's going to, you know, you know, it's an adventure. It's an, it's a, it's a journey and you learn new things along the way. And like I said, I'm, I'm just now, you know, really looking at some of my parts of my identity and I've been gone from Maryland for, you know, more years than I can count. So, you know, I think it's just important to remember that, um, you know, we're all searching and looking and being a work in progress at the same time. All right, so I have one more question, but I also want to make sure we get to um, the audience question. So if you have questions, please put them in the chat if you haven't gotten a chance to yet. Um, so for our panelists, shifting the focus to, to recent grads entering the workforce, right? So there's these dominant ideals around beauty, but there's also dominant ideas about what is acceptable and what's not acceptable in the workplace, right? Um, so you all have talked about incorporating your own authenticity and what that means to you in your own profession. Um, so what is your advice to recent grads to be true to themselves in the workplace and to celebrate their differences? Unfortunately, I think that the workplace is getting more acceptable or accepting to um, differences into, you know, being open with identities and letting people bring their full selves to work because they think we're learning that that is, is really important because if somebody is not bringing their full self to work, they're not able to perform to the best of their ability. So I think that this is a really good time to have this opportunity to, you know, not have to hide things from people. Um, and so, I, you know, I think the best strategy is to just be authentic and show that you're you. And if, and if there's, you know, some place that's not accepting of it, then maybe that's not the place that you want to be. I totally agree. I feel like for me, as I'm, cause I'm also a business owner, you know, I definitely want you to bring your full self, but I also want you to bring your respect you know and i think that that is extremely important and i feel like that is one of the things that i'm i I'm, i just want to make sure like people you know like respect yourself but also respect your respect your business respect what you want to offer out there into the world and and definitely bring your full self but also make sure you bring your respect too so yes <laughs> i would say something that I just realized that I did, but I went into my interview for my current job that I have. I work at a nonprofit and I like teach K through 12 education. So going into that, like my pronouns were in my bio, like my nails were painted. I'm pretty sure in my interview, it's like, this is who you're about to hire. There's no one else that's going to come from my experience. So like, this is what you have to work with. But also it wasn't like abrasive and I wasn't coming at it like, this is who I am. I'm non-binary. It was very easy to do because also I'm going into a work environment where I already felt like I could be myself. Like I wasn't trying to hide who I was, but they also were encouraging like individual and just like being, being who you are. Like my cis male boss had his pronouns in his bio. So that was enough for me to be like, okay, he's taking the effort to put his pronouns in his bio, therefore I'm in a safe space where I can do the same thing. So I think also upon like interviewing and stuff like that, looking for places where you feel like you can be represented to where you're not the only one of your kind. And if that's the case, if that is the case, when you get in the position, try to be hiring more diversity and looking for people that, that may not have that same opportunity. Because now I'm in the position where I'm like about to have a new employee and I'm like, who can I help get into a role that they may not have been traditionally been given? So that's what I think. I think you should just like really try to go into it as authentic as you can and find a place that you feel like you will be treated appropriately and valued. Thank you. I think that's very important and also really important to keep in mind, especially in this job market, right? Where 
where our folks are struggling, right? Um, so we do have a couple questions. We have one from Sydney. Sydney, do you want to unmute? Hi, I'm Sydney. I'm a senior here at Maryland. Um, as a young African American woman, I struggle with self love. So I was wondering what your advice would be for your younger self about self love, specifically being like an African American woman in society. I mean, honestly, I feel like my younger self, I, I would where I am right now would just transport back to where I was back then with the with the not giving the mm -mm, you know like I feel like that is really what I wish that I had I had learned much younger in life is just to do you to live the life on your that you want to live on your terms and no one else's and not listen to people who also don't know what they want. They, we, you know, we're, we give so much power to other people. And when you really analyze it, they actually don't know what they want, but what they also know that they do want is for you not to get what you want. So, so I just want you, you know, you to, to surround yourself with people that are going to lift you to your higher self and hold you accountable and making sure that you are hitting the targets that you want to hit in your life. And so that is what I would say. And, and just, you know, start to live your life with a, you know, like a wake up with your purpose and don't let anyone shake that purpose. I would say that if I leaned more into my culture a lot earlier, I would have been a lot happier. So like growing up, I had like cornrows and braids and et cetera, et cetera. But then like when I was like going through life, I was like, oh, I need to cut my hair short because I'm not dealing with my kinky curly hair. Or why do I always have to be doing all this to my hair when these white people don't have to be doing all this? I'm just going to cut my hair short. Or just the little things like that that I was like hating about being Black that I like now lean into. Like I have cornrows under here and I'm like, this is how I need to be treating my hair because I have the privilege to be able to wear braids. Not everyone's hair can do this. Not everyone's hair is treated like this. Like, yes, I have to do special things to my hair and like not just hair in general, but it's like our skin is different. Our hair is different. Our cultures are different. And instead of being like, why do I have to do this? I'm like, I'm privileged that I'm able to do these things because these are specific to me and my culture that I am able to do. And not every culture is, I mean, they, they do, that doesn't mean they should, gets to do these specific protective hairstyles. <laughs> but like finding the love in that because I'm like, oh, I just got my braids done and I look sickening. Or like finding the love in that, that I think has really been empowering for me as I've gotten older. And I wish if I had known that, when I was a lot younger, I wouldn't have been as fearful of accepting my culture or accepting who I am as a Black person. I think, you know, letting yourself, like I said, get out of your comfort zone and, and get to know other people and also, you know, find people who are like you and, and maybe have, you know, an open, authentic talk, because the thing about it is, is I think that we all feel like we're so alone in what we're going through. And the fact of the matter is, is that we're not, um, you know, like Joy said, everybody's going through it too. And, you know, I, you know, I think it's, it's great if you can find a support system of other people that you can share what you're going through, because I, that was one thing that I never, you know, I didn't even look for that. Like I had, you know, my white friends and my white sorority. And I didn't even think to step out of that and say, hey, maybe I should, you know, cultivate friendships with people who, you know, look a little bit differently or their skin's a little bit darker, or maybe, you know, they're in one of the black sororities that I don't even know anything about. Like, I wish I would have done that and learned about that because that, you know, that is part of me, you know, like I have, I have two parts of me. I've got, well, I have many parts of me, but, you know, I've got two, two, you know, races that I, I want to learn everything I can about both of them. And so I think reaching out to other people is a really great thing to do. Um, and it's, you know, it's hard to do, but, you know, there's so, such great, you know, mix of people at Maryland that there, there's got to be somebody out there that you can, you know, kind of make ties with and, and talk about these situations with.
All right, thank you all. Um, we have time for one more question, and there's one in the chat from Mary. Um, so how do you deal with the haters? I don't. <laughs> if there are haters, they are haters for a reason. And I realize that a lot of people who come from a negative space trying to like bring you down just don't have love for themselves because they're like projecting what they're projecting their insecurities onto you. So if someone is coming out of left field telling me what they don't like about me unprovoked, I'm like, first off, baby, you have to deal with that yourself. Like what ever personal issues that you are going through, please take them over there, handle them away from me and don't bring that to like, to, to my space, if that makes any sense. Like there, there are going to be haters in every regard of your life. Doesn't matter what it is. Like someone is always going to be trying to like bring you down. But what, what has really helped me, and it's not building a wall, but it's like just being secure in who I am because if they're like, oh, your makeup looks terrible. And I'm like, you're, you're wrong. <laughs> you're absolutely wrong. Um, <laughs> or like whatever that may be, if you just have that, like that mental strength and that mental wall to just be like that, whatever that negative comment is, they're wrong. And that's, that's what's helped me. If it's not coming from a constructive place of criticism, it's usually just straight up rudeness or hatred. And it's like that, that person is trying to, to deal with something themselves that they need to work through and they're projecting it on you. And that has nothing to do with you personally. That's just them, you being the, the lowest target for them to try to take that anger and aggression out on. And that's a personal issue for them. Well said, that's all I have to say. <laughs> um, I want to say like, so I feel like when you did, I mean, just being a human, it can be, it can be difficult because we all sometimes have, uh, we all sometimes get challenged by people. And I'm going to say that sometimes I'm not perfect on how I deal with haters. Sometimes I got to, you know, like, I mean, like, I know that this is a, uh, we're at University of Maryland, but sometimes I got to come out the bag on someone, you know? So, <laughs> so it is what it is, you know? But I, and I cannot say that I'm perfect in how I deal with people. However, I can say that what I've learned is sometimes, um, uh, not saying anything is saying something, you know, and, and sometimes people will learn. You do teach people how to treat you. And there are times when you do have to say something and you have to, you know, like let them know, like, don't like, no, you know? And so, so um, like Rock was saying, a lot of people are, don't, they're fearful of what they want to do with their own lives. So, and, and, and they don't want to see someone else come outside and, and uh, go past whatever, whatever, whatever their limitations are. So you, and so they put that, they want to put that fear in you so that you, it stops you and may, it causes you to doubt yourself. Um, there are, you know, so, so definitely try very hard to, to recognize it for what it is. And what it is, is that they don't want to see you advance because they're afraid that they're not going to advance or that we're questioning what they're doing with their lives. So, so, so definitely no, it's, it, you know, it's no perfect way. You know, you're going to have those days when you're going to be like, uh, excuse me, you know, and then it's going to be those days when you're going to handle it correctly. Um, so, so, you know, hey, I'm still learning myself. When, when everyone finds this out, let me know because I need to, I need to learn that myself. But, the, but I have to say, I have gotten a lot better on that. <laughs> all right, thank you all so much. Um, so we are just about at time, but I really want to thank our three panelists today um, for sharing your journeys, your lessons, your advice with us, um, and the importance of seeing the beauty in ourselves and not letting these outer message messages affect that, right? And the importance of community and surrounding ourselves with folks who encourage us and being the ones to encourage other people too, right? And to be able to push each other up. Um, and thank you to all of the participants today for sharing your lunch hour with us. Um, and before we end, I do wanted to turn it back over to Lena to share a little bit more about the events later this week. Thank you, Nicole. And thank you to Trisha, Rock and Joy. Um, and all of our Terps, thank you for attending the first event for Terrapin Love Week. 
I hope you enjoyed this afternoon's panel and have learned some tips or strategies for loving yourself, no matter what the outer shell looks like. Um, also, I just want to give a little plug and I uh, hope you will consider attending some other Terrapin Love Week events. All alumni who attend two or more events will have the chance to win a special treat. So uh, be on the lookout for a survey next week regarding your experience. And I want you all to stay connected with your alumni association. Go Terps! Go Thank you. Terps. <laughs> Thank you all. This is fun. A lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.